So what do you do if you love shooting film, but you maybe can't stand the cost? Or the idea of spending £2,000 on a film camera, particularly a Leica, if you're that way inclined, just does not make sense to you at all. And on top of that, you know, when you're honest, you appreciate the benefits of digital. You appreciate being able to shoot as much as you want, whenever you want, however you want, any light condition, push the ISO. But you hate the faff of some modern digital cameras with endless menus, so many options, barely obtuse controls. What do you do? Is there really a camera out there that can kind of do both? That can kind of give you the best of film shooting and digital shooting? I think there is. So I've been shooting a Leica in one form or another for about six or seven years. I originally had an M6 TTL, which I sold. Then I bought the M262, hoping that it would revive my personal photography. It totally did. And then thinking I wanted to revive my Leica film passion, I thought I had. Last year, just before the pandemic got serious, I bought an M7, but I sold it, and I kept this. The M262 delivers, and I used to think that the only way to get a film vibe, that kind of look, and that feel of shooting a film camera, I thought the only way to do it was get a film camera, shoot film. But I've been proving myself wrong these last few years. So now, let's talk about the features on this camera or rather the lack of features. Maybe let's start with what it doesn't have. It does not have an electronic viewfinder. It does not have in-body stabilization. It does not have live view, video. It doesn't have autofocus. It's an incredibly basic camera. And Leica has done that on purpose. But in its simplicity, I think lies its strength. Because what it does have is the classic Leica handling feels amazing and dense in the hand. The operation is simple and streamlined. Once you've set the auto ISO and auto white balance, and if you just are happy to live with that, all you have to worry about is putting it in aperture priority. That's the minimum. And it's wonderful to shoot that way. The viewfinder itself is very clear, makes composition easy. And finally, the image quality is stunning as you would imagine for a 24 megapixel camera that's been recently produced. So yeah, I hear you saying, okay, fine. It's got a bunch of features that other cameras have, just fewer. You know, you can buy a Fujifilm camera with a rangefinder-like viewfinder. Those cameras are also fairly minimal. They've all got shutter speed dials. All right, cool, whatever. I've shot with Fujifilm cameras. I used to have two X-T3s. I had two X-100s. They don't feel as good to shoot as this to me. And actually, one of the reasons is not to do with the viewfinders or the image quality or the size, because you know clearly the Fujis have all that. It's a very small thing that I didn't think I'd care about, but I find completely changes how I shoot and the speed with which I can operate the camera. And that's the auto review of the images. Bear with me. This is a really weird and unique feature. I haven't seen it applied this way on any other camera I've used from either Sony, Canon, Fujifilm, or Nikon. And that's once you take a photo and you've gone through the two stages of the shutter, if you just go up one stage, it will keep the image there for you. So that you can look at it, check your focus right, check your exposed right, check you've got everything where you needed it to be. And then when you finally let go all the way, the image disappears and you're back to shooting. And that makes the process so smooth. You can check if you got the focus right, you can check if you got the exposure right, if you weren't sure, if it was a challenging situation, if maybe stuff was moving, or you can just crack on and shoot as if you were shooting film without any review, just in the moment, shooting, enjoying yourself. It's a very small thing, but I think it makes a difference. And I think it's what people buy like us for, that sort of unique, intangible, weird, not on a spec sheet kind of vibe that you get from Leicas, that you don't get from any other cameras. That I certainly don't get from any other cameras. I think it's very telling that the thing I want to spend the most time talking about is the auto review function on this camera, because there really aren't that many other functions that are notable. 
There's nothing in the menus to find other than lens selection for non Leica lenses or formatting the card or you know, JPEG functions, but really you set those once along with auto ISO and you're basically ready to go and shoot any condition, any time. But this camera still slows you down enough to really force you to think about composition in the way that we all know we feel when we shoot a film camera. That sort of slowness, that deliberateness, that if you don't get the focus in time, you just don't take the shot. And to be honest, with the high ISO performance of this camera, you really can shoot in any condition and get a very nice, if a little grainy, shot. But I think the grain's quite nice. It's, I dare say, it's filmic. Now, when we're talking about Leicas, there's always this question of value for money. Though I think this does justify its cost in a way, because it delivers a unique experience to those who want it, I think there are some areas where Leica, perhaps at the time, I haven't actually used an M10, so I don't know how it is now, but at the time, dropped the ball a bit, technically. And I think you can see that most in the screen, the back LCD, and the card speed and write speed of the camera. The screen on the back is not great. It's not as bad as, say, a first generation 5D screen, but it's definitely not something you'd expect on a camera this expensive from a brand like this. Often you have to tilt the screen backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, trying to get a few different versions of the exposure through the LCD to kind of get a sense of whether you're exposed correctly. It's not particularly sharp either, although you can usually still tell if you've got it in focus. And the write speed of the camera, because it can only accept very slow cards, is slow. And you are not going to be shooting in burst on this, even though it has a dedicated function on the top here for burst. Those limitations I don't think are particularly relevant to this camera. I don't think you buy this camera for speed. I think you buy it for the exact opposite. You buy it to slow you down. You buy it for the exact reason you buy a film camera to practice more deliberate photography. I think with Leicas, a lot of focus ends up being on the physical interface of the camera, so the dials, the buttons. But I think a discussion does have to happen about the menu system of these older digital Leicas. It's not great, but you have to use it so seldom that it's not really an issue. So I've heard Sony menus are fairly hard to use, but that's more of an issue with Sony's because you have to use the menus more. With the Leicas, it is confusing in this generation, but you have to use them maybe once or twice a week. And so the fact that they're not great is fine. They're not the main part of this camera. They're not the thing you're using every single day to make the camera work in the way you want it to work. The fact that there's three buttons to get to a bunch of information that really should be hidden in one Whatever. You know, if the settings are there if you need them, you very rarely need them. So, in summary, should you get this camera, do I recommend the M262? I think if you're budget conscious, but you still want to like it, then the M262 for me is a no-brainer. If you're someone looking for a unique experience in a digital camera, I think this should be in your top five of unique digital cameras to own and use. Thank you for watching this video. If you've got any questions about the M262 or film Leicas or the Fuji X Pros and how they compare to this in terms of experience, please leave them in the comments below. I want to say a special hello to my two subscribers. You know who you are and I really appreciate that you wanted to see what I had to say about other cameras. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.